What drives you, exile? Is it justice, revenge, honor? No, it is power. The stars themselves would bear silent witness. How far would you bend before you break? Hello once again everyone, and welcome back. After what feels like an eternity, Echoes of the Atlas is only days away, bringing with it a new endgame expansion, frantic challenge league, and massive ascendancy overhaul. These new challenges demand a powerful league starter, and today we'll take a look at the very best my channel has to offer. Every build I'll be discussing has its own extensive build guide and full path of building linked in the description. All relevant 3.13 changes will be listed in the POB notes and video description of each guide. These changes will be fully implemented into each POB as soon as the program is fully updated. I'll be releasing brand new build guides throughout Echoes of the Atlas. Consider subbing to be notified when they release. Now let's get started with my primary recommendations. First up, we've got the Bleedbow Gladiator. Unleash rapidly chaining split arrows that inflict bleeds onto many enemies at once, triggering satisfying bleed explosions. Brutal puncture shots inflict a massive bleed onto single targets, often killing bosses with only a single hit. There's no need to spam shots. Instead, your attention can be put towards avoiding damage and attacking other targets, making this perfectly suited for both monster-heavy rituals and the Maven's Challenge. The build is simple to play. Both mapping and bossing utilize very few active skills. However, landing your puncture shots consistently will take precision. The build also has high damage consistency, meaning it doesn't utilize many unreliable flasks or buffs to get the job done. A strong life pool, fantastic life sustain, high physical damage reduction, consistent blind, solid chaos resistance, and the ability to heavily slow bosses makes it surprisingly sturdy. Gearing it up relies heavily on flexible rares and affordable uniques. Some downsides and changes worth consideration. Gladiator's bleed nodes saw a very slight reduction in power this league, but nothing serious. Channeling with a Salem can be a bit slow, however this can be avoided by running a 6-link puncture setup instead, which attacks much faster, at the cost of damage. A Salem may prove expensive in the first week of a league, but should drop in price quickly after that. Obtaining an optimized Elder Bow will be expensive, but with the return of Harvest Crafting, this may be much more attainable. Next up, the Glacial Cascade Saboteur. Offensively, it uses mines to unleash cascades of ice that auto-target nearby enemies. Quick throws and detonations enable solid clear speed. When mines are stacked up, massive chain detonations can be triggered, absolutely nuking bosses with truly absurd damage output. The build has a slightly complex, two-button mine playstyle. A bit of practice may be required to achieve smooth mapping and optimal boss damage. It also has good consistency. Most of its buffs are reliable, but a variety of flasks are required to truly maximize damage output. A large energy shield pool, powerful sustain, consistent blind, high chaos resistance, stun, ignite, and shock immunity, and the capability of handling every map modifier makes this both sturdy and reliable. Furthermore, Glacial Cascade inflicts strong chills, chain freezes, and constant knockbacks, an invaluable set of defensive layers that should prove particularly helpful during the Maven's Challenge. Gearing up is extremely flexible. The build starts off as life-based, relying comfortably on simple rares to level and push early maps, eventually switching over to low life when several key items can be obtained. Some downsides and changes worth consideration. The mine-based playstyle, while ridiculously strong, isn't for everyone. Saboteur received a mix of alterations this league, losing its reduced mana reservation and a marginal amount of its power, while becoming more consistent defensively. During the Maven's Challenge, it may be difficult to place large stacks of mines at once. Fast throws and detonations may be required when things get intense. Next, we've got the physical Blade Blast Assassin, which rains volleys of blades from the sky that can be detonated to create huge cluster explosions that instantly clear large chunks of the screen. These explosions shotgun single targets to achieve surprisingly potent boss damage. The playstyle is slightly complex, requiring good timing to optimize damage output. Several buffs and especially flasks also play a big role in maximizing damage and ensuring casting consistency. A significant life pool, life leech, elusive, high chaos resistance, consistent blind, heaps of attack and spell dodge, critical strike immunity, reduced damage taken, and more make this an incredibly tanky spellcaster. Gearing this up is about as flexible and affordable as it gets. Simple rare gear can comfortably occupy every slot, as most of the build's power stems from its gems, ascendancy, and skill tree. 
Some downsides and changes worth consideration. Assassin was altered this league, losing some cast and movement speed, while Elusive was made more consistent with increased effect. Semi-accurate, continuous casting is required to maximize single target damage, and the build's reliance on a mana flask to sustain skill usage may hamper its performance during long boss fights with no additional mobs. Multiple mana flasks can be used to improve consistency if needed. Next up, the Toxic Rain Trickster, which rains down arrows that create exploding spore pods that deal chaos damage over time in a large area. These explosions overlap, often hitting single targets multiple times with each attack, dealing serious damage as stacks accumulate. The spore pods and several other skills heavily slow enemies, making it much easier to control the chaotic encounters you'll experience this league, during which you can also lean on your Mirage Archer to continue dealing damage while you stay safe. The build has a relatively simple run-and-shoot playstyle. It also has strong consistency and doesn't lean on many unreliable buffs or flasks to deal its damage. Strong evasion, consistent blind, tons of attack and spell dodge, elusive, fantastic sustain, and more make the build defensively quite strong. Gearing up can be easily accomplished with flexible rares and affordable uniques. Leveling and early mapping with Tox Grain is a breeze due to its inherent power. Some downsides and changes worth consideration. Trickster, like many ascendancies, took a few nerfs this league. Damage output, spell dodge chance, and movement speed were all lowered slightly. The build will be just fine. Getting an optimized bow will be expensive, though this may be somewhat mitigated by the return of harvest crafting. Dealing maximum single target damage requires spamming shots, which may prove difficult during portions of the Maven's challenge. Next up, the Ice Nova Frostbolt Hierophant, which offensively unleashes massive, rapidly repeating Ice Novas on Frostbolt projectiles. These repeats occur automatically without continued casting as the Frostbolt travels. Continued casting will instead stack up an ungodly amount of repeating Novas, dealing massive damage to bosses. The playstyle is surprisingly intuitive and should be simple to jump into. However, several buffs and flasks are required to maximize damage output. A huge hybrid life, mana, and energy shield pool, 50% mind over matter, strong mana sustain, life leech, immunity to elemental ailments, powerful chills and chain freezes, good block chance, and more make this quite the tanky spellcaster. Gearing up relies largely on flexible rares and very affordable uniques. Eventually you'll want a pledge of hands, but a rare staff, wand, or scepter will do fantastic work beforehand. Some downsides and changes worth consideration. Hierophant received some adjustments this league. Life Leech was made less accessible, but Arcane Surge is now easier to attain and has significantly increased effect. The new Conviction of Power is a compelling alternative to consider. Continuous casting is required to maximize single target damage, though the automatic repeats, huge AoE, and consistent chills and freezes should make this very doable. Now let's briefly discuss some secondary recommendations worth consideration. My Lacerate Gladiator is a frantic, powerful, easy-to-gear melee build that can do some good work. It has seen a lot of changes over time, even being converted to Critical Strike Impale a few leagues ago. These alterations have rendered the video guide somewhat outdated, and this league I'm pushing the envelope even further. Adding an additional max block variant to the POB, this will be dramatically more tanky at the cost of damage. Consider going that route if you want to run Lacerate Gladiator this league. And finally, my Zombie Necromancer is a strong, tanky, classic minion build. It has seen large nerfs in the past, but it's one of few summoners that won't be hit this league. It gears up smoothly on rare gear and affordable uniques. The zombies should handle rituals and Maven's challenge well. However, facing up to 10 bosses at once could prove very dangerous if your minions can't survive. Additional investment into your minions' defenses may be necessary to have a smooth experience this league. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope that one of these builds will serve you well in Echoes of the Atlas. If you enjoyed this video, I'll be releasing new build guides throughout the league. Consider subbing and liking the video to support the channel. A massive thank you to all of my patrons. Producing this content wouldn't be possible without them. Special recognition goes to Adam Benamias, Agent Leo, Andrew Miller, Bill Felsman, Bloody, Chris IRL, Christopher Cravey, Colin Herber, Daniel Wig, Gareth Thomas, Garth Anderson, Greg Wells, Hunter Wilde, It's Mr. Worm to You, Jacob Davey, John Gabriel, John Snyder, Kevin Griffin, Kurt Wood, Lugash Galik, Marley, Matt Cardenas, Michael Johnson, Mike Anubis Gaming, Modimus Prime, Mr. Saving, Nate, Nerwas86, Piotr, Rasmus Blackpausko, Ray Hill, Richard Bollinger, Ryan McDonald, Sabaton Babylon, Snash, Spencer Ripe, Tony G773, Faros Vitelli, Vincent Foss, Wyatt Sabled, Xanth64, and finally, C.
If you'd like to support the channel, receive a credit, or join our Discord, consider checking out the Patreon link below. And as always, I've been Essero, and I will see you guys in the next video.